Hi all, it's Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. Back to uh, bottle videos now. Uh, this is part four of my uh, series on Australian antique bottles. Uh, and this time, it's not going to be a long video. We're just going to look at the tops. We're just going to talk about the tops you'd find commonly on Australian found antique bottles over the, uh, over the ages. So we'll start back at the earlier ones. Um, and really there's a direct color, cor correlation between the crudeness and the age, which you'd expect. Um, this 1850s, 1860s gin has a very crude applied top. And you'll hear that term a lot, applied top, uh, because these bottles were made in moulds and the tops were actually hand-tooled after the bottle was removed. So that's a term you'll hear from collectors all the time. Applied top generally dates these bottles pre-1920s because around about the 1920s, give or take 10 years, companies started to machine make bottles which actually included uh, moulding the top. So that's an important point as far as dating bottles. So we're just looking at the tops now and the different styles. So we'll concentrate on these beers for now. This one's known as a ring seal beer. Um, and you can see it's pretty much just like a, a flat piece of glass wrapped around the top. Uh, it's fairly crude, this one. And again, the later ring seal beers up to around 1900, a little bit later, were more uniform. Uh, but they date back into the 1800s generally. This one's probably a little bit later. And you'll see that there's a seam running up the top and it stops. But if you turn it around uh, 90 degrees, the seam then continues through the top. So this is really in the transition period uh, when they were starting to machine manufacture bottles. Uh, and it's still classed as a ring seal beer, of course. This one is more of a wrap top. Uh, you can see the marks in the neck there quite twisted and the top's been applied uh, you'll find that on early beers as well that one's a Foster's very common sort of top on a Foster's uh, crown seals also started in the late 1800s um, and this one I'm going to get these focused properly this one you'll see the seam running up the side of the bottle there and it, the top has been applied so that's an early crown seal and we'll look at some later ones in a second uh, now this early gin I mentioned before and this one's a little bit later and it's got the remains of a lead wrap so those tops are typical of case gin bottles and they're all applied tops back in this era uh, moving along we have some uh, bottles that won't stand up uh, this one's commonly known as a torpedo it's a Hamilton's patent and they have quite a a classic blob top which is applied again and they stopped making torpedoes around about 1900 so that sort of top is generally pre-1900 and this uh, other sausage bottle or it's a warm patent has a very similar top again apply an applied blob top and those tops pretty well stopped around 1900 but you go back earlier and they're much more of a squarer type top back to the 1850s, 1860s. So the crudeness is certainly a way of dating. Now, the marble bottles here are a cod bottle, um, a typical type top on a cod bottle. This one is very smooth around where it joins, and this one's referred to as a spun-on top. Um, it was applied, but then while the glass was molten, it was spun in the mould and it removes the seams from around the top. By comparison, this is an applied quad bottle top and you can see this one wasn't spun as in it's got an uneven, uneven edge around there. Um, not a lot of difference as far as um, value or anything goes. It's just two different types of finishing the tops on the quad bottles. Uh, now, these other bottles have a very similar top. In fact, if you dug a top out of a 
out of the ground you wouldn't really know if it's a cod or this is a Lamont bottle so there's no marble in this one and that's an applied top as well Lamont's sort of finished around 1900 marble bottles did actually go right through uh, into the early 30s and I don't have any out here but they have a, a um, top that's still applied because they had to put the marble in and while we're showing the marble the idea of the marble was the stopper you can see that it rolls down into the neck and rests on a rubber ring this one's still got the ring inside it and the pressure from the drink because they were always aerated waters the pressure held the marble at the top to open the bottle the marble would have to be physically pushed in uh, there was usually a plug of a special wood opener or a, a plug on the back of the counter at the shop which would drop the marble in release the pressure and then it would sit in that little channel there and the dints in the side there's various types of patents and whatever dint they used actually stopped the marble from blocking off the flow when you poured a drink so that one's called a dobson patent uh, this one's referred to as an all-way pour it doesn't have the dints it just has a crimped area so um, there's various patents there and we'll talk about cod bottles in a video particularly devoted to them uh, because cod bottles had marbles in it the kids of the time like to collect marbles and many bottles you find many cod bottles you find like this with the tops knocked off um, this one actually has a marble sitting in there but it will just come out and there's the marble so that's a particular enclosure there on the cod bottle uh, Lamont's um, often had a, uh, a stick or a little piece of this one's got one in it a piece of wood or ebonite or something with a rubber ring around it and that's sealed and again that had to be pushed in to open the bottle there is another bottle I'll find a picture for you of what they called a stick bottle and it had a longer piece that was pushed in uh, most of these earlier ones here all were cork except the crown seal of course so corks were the most common uh, enclosure or at least stopper uh, this salad oil here would have had a cork as well same with the castor oil um, the hot sauce here has a slightly different shaped top as does this coffee essence and these ones were cork sealed but the cork went on a little glass stopper and it's just a sleeve of cork so if you find those stoppers they generally suited uh, essence of coffee and chicory or a hot sauce such as a Holbrook's uh, this one's um, can't quite read that might be a Lee and Perrins or something anyway um, that's what those tops suit uh, ginger beers were mostly cork stoppers uh, however they did also have crown seal ginger beers so while, while we're talking crown seals this was the earlier one around about 1900 an applied crown seal and we go up a few years and this one's late 20s into the 30s and if we find the seam and you'll notice I'm always looking for the seam on the tops of bottles uh, it does run through to the top lip so that's a machine made bottle whereas the other one wasn't and this other one here is much more recent and it of course is totally machine made as well a bit hard to see the seam my camera's having trouble focusing but the more modern bottles uh, the seams are very fine because obviously the technology was better at making bottles there was less crudeness uh, now where were we up to um, here's another type of enclosure these are called an internal thread which has the stopper screw into the top uh, with the thread quite a coarse thread inside the neck uh, this one's a machine made bottle the top is very uniform and quite squarish and there's a definite seam running up through the top lip there uh, the earlier ones were a blob top uh, and they were a similar type of top to the torpedoes a little bit chunkier and uh, they date pre-1920s generally uh, there are tops on some bottles and particular little cabin inks I didn't bring one out 
which are shear tops and they're just snapped off when they're made uh, some are quite crude and quite chipped they're, but they're not broken and they were designed to take a cork they're known as a shear top now we'll move on to the milks here uh, earlier milks pre about 1950 were known as a wide mouth milk and they had a cardboard wad that sat in there and then later on due to hygienic reasons they went to a foil top milk into the uh, 50s and 60s and 70s um, so they're the two different milk top types uh, chemists and poisons earlier ones were quite a flat applied top um, you'll see the seam here just disappears the top's been hand tooled and probably just pressed flat it took a cork as well once you get through into the 20s and maybe the 30s they tended to have this step on them uh, machine made cork top 30s into the 40s and then you start to get um, screw on tops this one's obviously much more recent um, but from the 50s onwards most bottles had screw tops and generally they're not that collectible unless they relate to a local town this little poison has that step top as well so probably 30s or 40s on that one so you can tell a lot about a bottle and its date from the way the top is and also the type of bottle if you dig up the top of one of these you know most collectors would recognize that as a chutney or a pickles or something or not a pickles they're wider but a chutney or a 26 ounce sauce perhaps and that's typical of the sauce bottles applied tops again here's a standard 13 ounce sauce and it's got just a plain little ring top on it uh, applied again so very common sauce bottle top uh, later ones did have into the 20s and 30s they had a coarse screw top uh, and then later on again the screw tops got more uniform like on this 60s era Marvia bottle so I think I've covered everything there um, really it's just identifying what sort of tops are used on what sort of bottles you get to know them after a while and different sorts of enclosures most bottles were cork of course uh, it was the easiest way to seal the bottle especially in the early days uh, these ones are designed to lie down in case you were wondering and the reason there was that corks back in the 1800s weren't um, usually the best quality and the only way to keep these things from from going flat because they were normally aerated waters was to uh, if you kept the cork wet it would keep it seal therefore the bottles were stored lying down and that's the reason for the not being able to stand them up uh, I don't think there's anything else to mention but uh, tops are a critical part of identifying bottles as far as and as far as dating them goes as well um, you'll get to know the styles after a while and you'll get to have a pretty good idea of dating as well from the top styles also I mentioned in one of the earlier videos on dating bottles the purple glass you can date that sort of late 1890s into the night, right through to the 1920s that's an applied top as well so tops are a critical way to identify bottles date them and it just adds up to your knowledge if you're starting to collect you'll be able to um, work out what area you've got we'll look at bases in a future video that's the other important area to look at and then we'll do a series eventually on various types of bottles and i'll try and give you a bit of history on the patents and that sort of thing Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.